and we work with our, um, I usually use just a spoonful of sun-dried tomato as well. Um, so what you want to do is just take uh, two spoons of just say hi. Of, three of this kind of like salsary Italian tomato sauce, maybe four actually, like that, and then leave that to the side, put the lid back on. And then for the sun-dried tomato, so again, what you can do if you're using just a, a can of tomatoes, is just pour the can in, um, and then add, uh, uh, and, and then I use just a spoon of that. So this is, anyone can do this, it's, uh, this is just the way I do it. Um, I prefer the taste of sun-dried tomatoes and stuff like that. So what you want to do is then add any herbs that you have to that sauce. So I, I've got a little garden at home with thyme. So I'm going to put some thyme in here, like that. And then, if you're doing with a, with a can of tomatoes, the same. can of tomatoes, a touch of olive oil, um, some salt, some pepper, a bit of sugar as well. So if you're using tinned tomatoes, uh, they tend to be quite sour. So you want to add that sugar, just, just a pinch of sugar to kind of counteract that, that, that sourness. Um, and then what you want to do is take two garlic as well. So this is for everybody as well. Two garlic cloves. Um, and, oh sorry, three garlic cloves. And then take the, the top and the bottom off, like so. Um, and then chop them uh, lengthways down the middle. Uh, lengthways down the middle. And then take the uh, take the kind of the, the cover off, um, and then down the middle like so. And then make sure that you get rid of all of the, the kind of the skin, the tops, all that kind of stuff. And then here's a little trick that my my papa told me about garlic. Um, once that's looking all good and you've got your three cloves chopped in half, um, you can then uh, start trying to take the root out. So what you want to do, uh, as you can see here, right, that's the that's the garlic clove, right? You see that, that shiny bit? That's the root. So what you should be doing is taking the, the edge of your knife here, this, this, this section here, like that, and then place the garlic here and just remove that, that root like that. The reason why we do this is garlic root um, in Italian kind of old wives' tales, they say that it gives you gas and it adds a bitterness to any sauce that you add it to. So, as a, as a rule, um, I tend to, to take the root out. Um, you don't have to, um, but I think a good way to test the theory behind this is when you buy pre-chopped garlic and you cook with it, um, you'll find that actually the garlic is quite bitter and it's quite, uh, it gives you quite a bit of gas actually, it makes you quite gastric. And so I think uh, there is some truth to it. Um, and I just prefer to kind of take that root out and and make my sauce in a, in a more traditional manner. Um, so once you've got that done, um, that all the roots are done, take your take your knife and just do probably 10 mm or 5 mm, sorry, 5 mm slices. So you don't want to you don't want to grate it or you don't want to crush it. And you don't want to um, uh, kind of dice it up into tiny, tiny, tiny bits. Because garlic is quite a delicate um, thing, and it, and it can, and it can um, burn quite easily. So what you want to do is give it a little bit of love um, and a bit of a bit of a chance to survive the inferno of the oven that you're going to put it in. So you want to give it. You know, I'll give you a slide. I'll give you a look at how much I do it. By. Again, it's not, it's not a science or anything like that, but the way that I do it is probably something like that. So, Quite thick. These ones here are a good example. Okay. And then that will basically allow that will allow the um, the garlic to survive the intense heat um, inside the oven. And um, it, Eduardo, is this the root? Uh, uh, show me your camera. Yeah, if there's like a little root inside. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So cut it in half lengthways, and you'll see like a shiny root that goes down through the middle. So just take the corner of your knife here, box yep. section, and just, just get it out. And then once that's done, use your table for food. So you've got thyme, garlic, a bit of sugar if you're using tin tomatoes, um, and you 
got um, some chunks of garlic in there. Uh, I'm actually going to add a little bit more to and make sure that, yeah, we're getting all the goodness. How much of chopped, chopped, chopped tomatoes do we need to add? Just as a question. Um, are you, do you have like a, a tin tomato? Or I have you, 500. I have this. That, uh, is it chunky or puree? It's chunky. Chunky. So just just a bowl about that size. Okay. Uh, you want just about a half half full, and then add okay. a little garlic, add any herbs like thyme or rosemary. Um, okay. And add, um, basil as well is quite nice, but I would probably okay. leave basil to the end. It's quite delicate. It might, might give you some problems um, in the oven. So once you're there, I also sorry, I also add a little bit of chili. I quite like chili, so I just do like five or six shakes of chili. Um, or if you've got fresh chili, just do one all the way up along, keep the seeds, throw it in. So that's your that's your base mixture, right? And then just leave that to kind of get all sexy and have all the flavors getting in together and allow the twist olives to kind of interact with the garlic and the thyme. Uh, the sugar will help break it down as well and feel quite, quite tasty. Which with mushrooms, yeah, go for it. Um, is it okay if instead of doing this kind of sauce, if I just like later fry some garlic and then throw it in with the tomato paste? Yeah, you can, you can. So the, the thing is, is with, with pre-fried garlic, um, once it goes into the oven, you, there's a danger of it overcooking. So what you want, to, the way I do it is I, I usually put raw garlic in, let those flavors intertwine, and then on the base, just by the cheese, that garlic becomes more and more um, cooked over time. So that 10 or 12 minutes in the oven um, is, is actually how, how much it will take to cook the garlic anyway. Um, but if you're, if you're not a big fan of garlic, um, you, you can you know you can put it like it's not or something that you need to do. And if you want to put garlic afterwards anyway, that that's also important. But you you need to give the garlic a large um, you know a large thickness so that the oven doesn't destroy it. So the reason why I put it in here is more to do with the flavors and allowing them to kind of interact. And then with mushrooms, for example, what you want to do is take your knife down the middle like that. So you've got your mushrooms in half. Lay them flat so they're nice and secure. Tuck your tuck your, um, your fingers in like that, and then just do slices across. Again, you want to give them you know ten, you know five to eight, and then thickness. Um, you don't want to put too many mushrooms because it's quite a wet a wet kind of item, so when it cooks, it sweats a lot of water, so you don't want the dough to become too wet because of that. So I usually use about three or four uh, button mushrooms or brown mushrooms, um, and again, we just leave that for our, our topping, uh, like that, and like that. Again, in half, put it down flat so it's secure, and then just cross like that giving it like 10 a man, maybe more than rough chops, nothing nothing too perfect. Um, and then what you want to do is put those mushrooms. Put those mushrooms into a separate bowl so that you know that that's your top topping to be used later. Um, oh, and what about, I have a question. Can we use yes. uh, the portobello mushrooms? Yes, but with portobello mushrooms, make sure you chop them uh, in four and then and then once that you have a quarter of a portobello, make sure yeah. you then slice it down. Because you, you don't yeah. want large chunks of portobello going through the middle, because again, mushrooms, they'll sweat a lot. And okay. that large of a space, it doesn't have time for the, for the steam or the water to evaporate. So it will actually be absorbed by the, by the dough. So you've got to make sure that you're, you're giving the dough a fighting chance uh, of becoming crispy. Okay. So I've got my four, four mushrooms in there. Maybe I'll do five, actually. Uh, I, I really like mushrooms, um, but again, just be very careful with once we plate um, the pizza a bit later, once we start making it, uh, at five o'clock, um, mm -hmm. we can go through you know, where the do's and don'ts of that. Um, so we're going to do a mushroom, impossible meat, salami, and pepper pizza. So again, for, for pepper, take your pepper, if you have one, um, take off the top, yeah. Any questions? You good? Okay, and then just go down the sides like that. You don't want to have any of the white, the white stuff 
all the, uh, the seeds. And that can go there. And again, with peppers, the white is, 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 is something that can be a bit bitter. So take this is be quite careful of. You know, if you're ask an adult if you're a young kid to do this, but take take your knife and just just take out how do I do this so you can see? Just take out the white there. Okay, so you want to get rid of all this kind of stuff. Um, and then the same for this, like that. Take that out, leave it on the side of your board, and then like that. Does anyone have any questions at the moment? We all good? There's a question about can we add spinach? Yes, so spinach uh, will sweat a lot. Um, so what I would advise with spinach is actually fry it off, um, uh, sorry, steam it off in a pan first, and then with that, with that spinach, uh, put it into a muslin, muslin uh, cloth and squeeze out any excess um, water. And then probably halfway through the cooking process, put some feta cheese and spinach, uh, olives and things like that, but only halfway. Spinach is, again, you don't want to put in um, raw spinach onto the pizza because it will, it will sweat a hell of a lot of water and it will make the, the, the base very soggy. So you have to be quite smart with how you apply your, your vegetables uh, in particular to pizza. You know, it's all about the size and if it's something like spinach that sweats a hell of a lot, then I would I would, I would uh, pre-steam them and then squeeze out the excess and then apply it to the pizza uh, halfway through so with a bit of pepper like that, you just want to do long, kind of one centimeter strips, like that. Keeping your fingers safe, and like that, and like that. So what I've got now is I've got my peppers, I've got my tomato, and I've got my mushrooms, and then I have my uh, beet-free salami here. And I've got my mozzarella grated cheese. Um, again, the grated cheese is just done out of ease. If you've got real mozzarella, that's a bonus. Just tear it up. I'll show you how to do that later. Very, very easy. Um, and I think that's it. So is, is everyone at, at, at this stage so far? Everyone's done the, the dough. It's covered in oil. You've got cling film over it. And, and it's, it's, and it's rising. Sorry? And the dough's already rising. Yeah, those are already rising, right? great. Yeah. Nice. So look, look, here we go. So grow my dough. My dough was about half the size. Look at it now. It's already become almost double. So that's the yeast um, doing its work. Well. So yeast is a, a lot of scientists or anything like that, or a pile of this. But yeast is it's, it's a it's a living it's a living thing. Um, and as it as it lives, it, it, it kind of uh, expels oxygen. So it's breathing. So as it's breathing, that air is permeating the dough and it's forcing it to rise. So you need to leave it in a cool, dry place. Put some music next to it, talk to it. You know, it's, a very, it's a living thing, so you've got to be nice to it. And it will rise and rise and rise to about four or five times if you're lucky in size. So what we've got now is we've got our dough covered in oil in a bowl covered in cling film in a cool, dry place. We've got a bowl of tomatoes, garlic, um, thyme, basil, you know, you can even put a bay leaf in here if you want, but just remember to take it out. Um, so that's your, your kind of your sauce at the bottom. We've got pre chopped uh, mushrooms ready to go, and we've got some chopped um, peppers, red peppers ready to go. We've got our salami, uh, meatless salami, and we've got a mozzarella bag. So we are at the right stage now, so all we have to do is wait for the dough to rise. So part two of this pizza class will be at uh, five o'clock, is that right, Jane? And I'll yeah, teach you guys okay. how to roll out the pizza dough, put on the toppings in the correct way and the correct layering, give you the right instructions for the oven and how to kind of do little tricks in the trade. Um, so do, does anyone have any questions? Uh, yeah, before... uh, Rahul has a question on what herb he can use. Uh, so you could use, if you want, to use, oh, okay, I'll use oregano 100%. Yeah, yeah. Uh, parsley, parsley, I wouldn't use, but I've got oregano in the sauce 100%. Yeah, you, you didn't put the mushrooms into the tomato, did you? I don't have any, unfortunately. Okay, good, good. <laughs> okay, so oregano, I'd put maybe a tablespoon, uh, a teaspoon, so one of these, one of these puppies, 
Um, just put one of those guys in there. Uh, I'd also, if you have any time, it's quite nice. Um, obviously, salt and pepper. So I haven't done that, but one second. So salt and pepper is very, very cool. And also, uh, again, it's, you know, there's no right or wrong on how to do it, but pepper, just a three or four rotations like that. And then again, you've got to remember to take it out though. But if you've got like a bay leaf, I just pop it in the sauce, and that will slowly start um, giving two, two bay leaves. Like that, and that will slow to make sure it's sinking in, cover it up like that, and that will slowly start flavoring that sauce as well. Um, and then you could also use. Um, I have a question can you use tomato puree, or do you need to roast it first or cook no, it first? No, it's fine. Puree is fine. You can. You know, so what I do, I actually cheat. I, I get a spicy tomato salsa jar if it's already got a bit of vegetables in there. Oh, okay. And I mix that with a spoonful of sun-dried tomato, and that gives okay. it a real depth of flavor. And then I add bay leaves, salt, pepper, sugar, garlic, and thyme. And then okay. you put fried oregano in there, you can put, um, what else would you put? You could, I would put basil, I'd put basil, fresh basil leaves, I'd put on top of the pizza after it's done. Um, and then uh, I think any chili flakes as well. I, I use chili flakes because I like a bit of heat. Um, and if you want to put a chili in there as well, down just a fresh chili like that. Um, but now is a way to get so you've got to put on some nice music. Um, you know, make sure that you're relaxing, let the yeast do its job, um, and come back at five o'clock for this the next step. And then we'll, okay. we'll start bringing out this pizza. We'll do some spinning. Yeah, I'm not joking. I can't spin. <laughs> We're going to do some just spread some pizza dough, get the topping into the right order, get the oven at the right uh, temperature. About 13 minutes in there, and then we can have a, a glass of wine and a slice of pizza. If you guys can ask me any questions. Okay, so we we good. We're ready to to head off to the rest of our work day. Um, I hope you guys uh, had a good time, and I hope that your dough rises nicely. Mm -hmm. um, and if you need anything, just let Jane know, and she can reach out to me. But I think for now, let's just get back to work, and uh, I'll see you all at five. Thank you. Quick question. Thank you. Yeah, go for it. Sorry, I've, I've stepped away for a while. Thanks very much, Eduardo. That was awesome. Uh, are you going to finish off making the pizza bases at five? Is that right? Yeah. So we're going to we're going to basically uh, allow the dough to rise for about four hours, and then at five o'clock we're going to reconvene this call. So there's a part two that I think you guys will have been invited to. You just need to accept that on the Zoom on the Zoom link. And then what I'm going to do is show you how to spread the dough in a, in a professional manner <laughs> and then put the sauce, just the right amount of sauce on so you don't get soggy base. Put the toppings on, get the oven ready, throw it in, and 13 minutes later we're going to have a really, really tasty pizza uh, to eat together. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. I have a quick question about the consistency of the of the pizza, of the paste. It mustn't be, it mustn't be too watery, right? Because when you yeah, add so much... It should, it should be too watery. Um, but again, uh, if it's a, if it's a paste that you've used, then is this it's okay. Uh, can, you, can you pin your video? Sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. It's fine. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No problem at all. Um, okay. Thank pretty, you. Mine is pretty chewy. Like that. So mine is chunks of basil. Okay. Uh, sorry, okay. bay leaf, you know, chunks of tomato. There's a bit of water in there, but the way the way we apply it later. Is pretty important, so we're not going to be, you know, drenching the dough in the okay. heat. It's the way that you apply it, and the, and the amount is very important. So we'll we'll see all of you guys at five. Okay. Is that okay? Any any yeah. last questions? Any other questions? All good. I think someone Stop asked right aubergines. Oh, oh, you want to, you want to use aubergine? Yeah, someone asked. Yeah, so if you want to use aubergine, what you need to do is cut them into probably 10 mm slices, uh, cover them in salt, um, like sea salt, like a, a hell of a lot of salt, and leave them out for the same time as the dough. What this will do is um, take all of the moisture out of the aubergine. And then once that's done, what you want to do is uh, slice it up into something similar to the peppers and put, the, put it onto the pizza. But I wouldn't advise using aubergine unless you dry them out. Otherwise, your, your pizza is going to be very, very soggy. Or what you can do is, is, is pre-grill them. You can do a little bit of cheap, and you can salt them 
dry them out, get all the water out, and then put them on a griddle pan and just char them a little bit, and then use them on the pizza as well. But I, I prefer to cook things in unison because flavors begin to mingle more when you cook together. So if you're, if you're cooking things separately, you're not going to get an, an integration of flavor. Does that help? Thanks. Okay. <laughs> okay. Brilliant. All right, guys. Hello. Um, hey, Ado, sorry, one more question. Hey, Robin, what's up, man? I, sorry, I missed most of your call. Um, uh, so, thanks to Jane for for recapping the the, the plot. Um, so about the sauce, is there an alternative? Let's say if my family doesn't like tomatoes, um, yeah. is there a cream alternative or something like you? Uh, you can use like a, a white base. So what what you can probably do is um, you could probably do like a bechamel or something like that. But for me, I don't tend to do white bases. Um, what you can do is take take a bit of like either um, like a cheddar that was right way. You can you can do a oh naked naked pizza. So what you can do is uh, put the cheese on top, um, add but mix the cheese with a little bit of cream, like uh, maybe two or three tea teaspoons of cream, and then use that as your base. But then the toppings that you put on need to be quite robust. You don't want watery toppings. Um, so you can use like feta cheese, you can use uh, the spinach as long as it's pre, uh, pre-steamed, pre pre-cooked and, and, and drained. You can use the aubergine as well. Uh, but the white base pizza, I'm not, I'm not an expert on. Um, but I would, if you don't like tomato, you can always get away with just a lot of cheese and cream. And make sure that it's not a, make sure it's not a, uh, I don't think you want to use a bechamel or anything like that. I think it'd be a bit weird. Um, so I would use just cream cheese, maybe a bourbon or something like that, something like strong cheese, that gives a bit of, of a robust flavor. Uh, does that help? Yeah, it does. Um, has, has, have you guys started on the sauces yet, if it's tomato based? Because if not, because is there any way I can catch up on this? Or should I call you separately? Uh, we have part two uh, at 5 p.m. today. This is for the topping and how to roll out your dough and everything. So that would okay. probably be a good time. As well. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if this is a good cheat, but if you have like the you know the pre-made pasta sauce, like the carbonara sauce, maybe you can try yeah. that. Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Sorry about that. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll actually call my dad. But by the time it's three o'clock, <laughs> my dad will be up. So I'll ask him what he does. Uh, he'll probably call me a traitor, but I'll I'll go to you. Okay. Thanks, Eduardo. I know this goes against every tenet of Italian. Yeah, no, no, it, it makes me laugh actually. There's so many like these unwritten rules. Like I remember a friend of mine was talking about he was he was using uh, Parmesan cheese on a on a, a seafood pasta in Italy. So he, he asked for Parmesan for the for the seafood risotto, and the waiter just turned on his heel and just said, "Get out!" Like he, he, they were so upset about it. So I, I think in in general, like Italians, <laughs> especially in Italy, they're a little bit weird. They're a bit insane when it comes to like the rules of how to do things. Um, but I will ask my dad if he, if he has a, a version, like a white version of the pizza, then 100% I'll teach it to you at 5 o'clock. Okay, great. Thanks for that. Thank you. Cool. Thank Bye, you. everyone. Thank See you. you at 5 later. Yeah. Okay. Bye. 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 B